Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a resultant force. You should then be able to calculate the resultant of forces acting in a straight line. And if you're a higher tier student you should be able to draw a free body diagram to show the forces acting on an object. Now I should point out that in this video we're just looking at how to calculate resultant forces. We're not looking at how those forces affect the motion of objects. We'll be looking at that in a later video. Okay, now remember that a force is a push or a pull that acts on an object due to the interaction with another object. Forces are vector quantities because they've got both magnitude, in other words size, and direction. So in this video, we're looking at resultant forces. I'm showing you here a man pushing a box along the floor. The man's applying a force of 20 newtons acting to the right, and we can show that with this arrow. A friction force of 10 newtons is acting to the left. Now, the resultant force is a single force that has the same effect as all of the original forces acting together. To work out the resultant force, we subtract the smaller force from the larger force. In this case, there's a resultant force of 10 newtons acting to the right. Okay, this shows a car traveling along a road. The driving force of the car is 10,000 newtons acting to the left. The car experiences a friction force with the road of 4,000 newtons acting to the right. The force of air resistance also acts against the car. This has a value of 5,000 newtons acting to the right. So how do we work out the resultant force in this case? First, we need to work out the total force acting to the right. Adding together friction with the road and air resistance gives us a total force of 9,000 newtons acting to the right. Subtracting 9,000 newtons from the driving force gives us a resultant force of 1,000 newtons acting to the left. Okay, this shows a skydiver falling through the air at a constant velocity. The skydiver experiences a force of 800 newtons acting downwards. This is the skydiver's weight, in other words, the force due to gravity. At the same time, the skydiver experiences an upward force of 800 newtons due to air resistance. In this case, the forces are balanced. In other words, the resultant force is zero. Now, in the examples we've seen so far, we've shown all the objects involved. However, it's much easier to draw a free body diagram. I'm showing you the free body diagram for the skydiver here. In a free body diagram, the object is shown as a point. The forces are drawn as arrows starting at the point. Remember that the length of the arrow shows us the size of the force and the direction of the arrow shows us the direction of the force. I'm showing you here an aeroplane flying at a constant velocity at a constant altitude. And the word altitude means the height above the ground. We're going to finish now by looking at the forces involved. So here's a free body diagram. As you can see, the weight of the aeroplane is acting downwards towards the Earth. However, as we said, the aeroplane is at a constant altitude. So that means that there must be a force the same magnitude as the weight, but acting in the opposite direction. That force is called lift. Now the aeroplane experiences a forward force provided by the engines, and that force is called thrust, and I'm showing that here. At the same time, the aeroplane also experiences the force of air resistance, or drag, acting in the reverse direction. Now, because the aeroplane's moving at a constant velocity, the forward and backward forces must be balanced, and we can see that by the length of the arrows. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on resultant forces in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.